Uh, here it is, the uh, 13th day of uh, September, and bucks are hard and horn, some of them, not all of them. But they're down on this one primary scrape, and uh, they're starting to work at pawing it and rubbing their head in it. So we're going to get a new branch down there so they can have something uh, to work through the rest of the year with. So I saw this. This is a uh, pin oak. And these leaves will stay on all year. You cut them down when they're green, they won't fall off. So we'll get this cut off and get hooked on down there. There, pretty much to it. Now when we get it down, We'll fashion it to where we can get it. Might cut one of these limbs off. We'll get it to where it hangs down. And like I said, these leaves off this pin oak will stay. They won't fall off. They'll still be on there next year at this time. So we'll get it down there and see what comes of it. We're gonna take this cedar tree down. It's canopied over and it's not gonna grow. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it down, scar it up, bury it, pack it down around it, and hopefully make a rubbing post down there with it. So we'll get some of the trash cleaned off of it real quick. To that. See, it's all one twine into the other tree anyway. So. Not like a big Christmas tree. Well, we'll carry that down. You're gonna see a buck that was using this a few days ago, and uh, I thought it was, you know, the really but this, this scrape has been here for years. Oh, we'll get him doctored up. Next year, I think I'm going to have to put a new limb up there. Reinforce it. It's getting pretty old, pretty dead down through here now. I don't know how many bucks rub their antlers on this, but quite a few as they pass through that. We've made this scrape now for 10 years, and uh, the travel corridor, east, west, north, south. And when the rut gets going, they really travel. They can use the winds, and I got a tree stand just over yonder uh, that is really good. There's a beautiful east wind, southeast, northeast wind stand. Everything's going up the hill. It's an excellent morning stand and evening stand, as far as that goes. But uh, you're right on the inside corner, and that's a, as Roger Rothauer stated. Uh, that's the best place to be is on the inside corner.
get this bailing wired on. You can zip tie it too if you want to, but I got some bailing wire so it doesn't take long. I got a Ford and bailing wire standard equipment, but I've uh, had Chevys in the past. <laughs> They didn't compare at all to the Ford. They uh, <laughs> went through transmissions faster than toilet paper. We get this up here because, like I said, you're going to see on a... Uh, I don't remember what day it was. It was the 1st or 2nd of September. And this is the 13th. They were already actually putting their head up in this tree. Uh, we'll see what comes of that. Got one more limb I think I'll tie on. Nice thing about a Ford and bailing wire, at least they won't leave you stranded. <laughs> I've had to tie my tractor on behind the Chevy and pull it home. <laughs> uh, you couldn't do nothing with them. And that's the other thing, not to get the car started. All these people are gravitating to automatic transmissions are stupid. Number one, if the car quits running or the truck quits running, <laughs> guess what? You got a tow bill. You got a straight stick. You can put it in neutral, chain it up tight, pull it home with the other vehicle. So, uh, something about having automatic transmissions. I guess that way it keeps their hands free so they can run apps on their smartphone. I guess that's the reasoning behind that. You know, I'd almost tie a rope up there today for that. You know? I could get it right there and tie, I got the ladder down here. Well, you can see if you can get up there. Yeah, I will. You got the rope? Yeah. What I'm going to do is throw this rope up over that limb there, pull it down, and tie it off right here to support that. The live right there, but this part here, and I don't want it to be busting off. And it still could bust off. And it won't be that we didn't try. That's going to help a whole lot because without that, it could uh, fell off pretty easy. I might just see if I got enough rope to do it twice. Yep. that down now. Oh, I love Mala Power Rose. She's a bitch. Yeah, I got this all watered in. 
best best suck urine you can have, human piss. Regardless of what the so-called blow scalpers say. Piss is piss. So I'm gonna take a hole about three feet deep or so, and I'm gonna put that cedar tree and scuff it up. And hopefully that'll become a rub. And I wouldn't want to have been doing this last week when the ground was rock hard. This is again working with nature instead of against her. Hope I don't hit too many trees by trying to do this. See that? You can't even make a mud ball out of that. That's after four inches of rain in a week since the, actually the, it started raining on the 8th and quit raining on the, uh, I suppose it was the 11th, 12th for sure, 12th was yesterday. And then to go very far. Can't move, very hard to make a mud ball out of that. Oops. That's some serious dryness. If I had some water, I'd just go get it and let it sit in there. That's going to be good. <laughs> Just a few minutes more and call that good. Because that ground is super hard down there. I can't only get any dirt out of it. Anyhow, Well, from the top of this red decal to here, that's pretty solid. We'll pack it in there real hard. And then we'll have this part here that can scuff up. Now, now keep in mind, you don't have to do this to deer hunt. This is just something to be doing as an experiment and something fun. I guess it's fun. But uh, if it works and you, you, you see the deer do rubbing it, then you'll get to see it and we'll go from there. Now we're going to put a price on that tree. And it seems the more expensive they are, the more they get attacked. We're putting a suggested retail manufacturer's price on that tree of $3,000. And we're not going to put any deer uh, prevention around it. So that's a $3,000 tree. And I know if I plant one for $3,000, it'll be uh, tore to bits and pieces. So I'm going to plant a $3,000 cedar tree and let's see what happens to it. Because I know them deer can read, right? So here we go, we're going to put a $3,000 tree here. You 
because if you plant one and you want to keep it, it'll be devastated. Uh, I think I'll cut some of these branches off the bottom real quick with the loppers. The more work I do on this tree, the more valuable it gets also. get their attention. I'll take the chainsaw and scuff this up once we get it stuffed in there. And, uh, that ought to encourage them to uh, get with their destruction. back over in there. It's all pushed this way real far against the back side of the hole. That way it, uh, it's standing fairly straight. Now we'll get getting this hole in here. Getting this dirt camp in there. And like I said, this is not a required, this is just something to do on a Sunday, and it by no means is a requirement. Maybe I can tamper with the spade. Oh, yeah. This will be pretty cool if this works. Be good entertainment. Deb said I should have put a bag of concrete mix in there, which wouldn't have been a bad idea. But this will work too. If it works, it works. <laughs> That's what's funny about the things you do. Yeah. It's not about killing the white-tailed deer. It's about coming up with ideas and seeing if they, what, uh, what comes of it. I never thought I'd ever be putting trees out in the timber to have deer rub on them. But like I said, they know the difference. They know this tree is three thousand dollars because I said so. It's about like the, the Democrats and their three hundred trillion dollar deficit they want us taxpayers to pay. You know, if they were so kind and so forgiving, why don't they just give up their wages? They're all uh, they they're, they're all overpaid, and they've been some of them have been drawing uh, a paycheck for fifty years from taxpayers. So uh, if you ever seen their bank accounts, you we paid them people back. <laughs> they couldn't even hold a job in public. 
That's why they don't like Trump. Trump beat them at their own game. He was a successful businessman, and capitalism worked for him. And all they want is socialism. And I can't believe people want to buy into that. But there's an idiot born every minute. I can't say I'm the smartest guy for doing what I'm doing here, but we'll see how that materializes. At least it didn't cost taxpayers no money. That's pretty solid. It gets rained on it. It'll get packed in harder. And if I see a, tree, a buck running around with a tree on his head, I know where it came from. <laughs> oh, that's even going to be cooler. They got 90% of that dirt back in that hole, so that's pretty tight. You know, I have to ask myself, I can't visualize people like Bernie Sanders or Chuck Schumer or Nancy Pelosi doing anything and giving back and with labor other than giving back something with money that they sold to high taxes. And it is election year, so I gotta let my thoughts be known. And as Johnny Cash said, you know, you give him the middle finger if you don't like it. <laughs> that's pretty good. We got most of that dirt in that hole, so that's tight. Take a couple more limbs, those two limbs are off, so they can really get their head in there. Let's get the, let's make a buck club on it. It might be a little early for them to rub, but who knows? They smell that cedar tree, they might do with the program. Some redneck will come walking down the trail and go, Did you see that? Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what materializes. And like I said, this is not necessarily a deer hunt. This is just something to do on a Sunday. It's cool. I'm going to go down and hunt uh, groundhog tonight. And, um, We'll see if we can get him taken out of the woods. But there's your buck rub, and hopefully that grows. We'll have it on camera if it does. So that's it from the non-typical. I guess this is as fake as the Democrat Party is. They try to make everything look real, even though it's fake. And um, let's see what happens. We'll know on November 3rd.